Marshal of France and Grand Admiral or Admiral of France, Joachim Napoleon Murat, first Prince Murat, was Grand Duke of Berg from 1806 to 1808 and King of Naples from 1808 to 1815. He received his titles in part by being the brother-in-law of Napoleon I of France through marriage to his youngest sister, Caroline Bonaparte, as well as personal merit. He was noted as a daring, brave, and charismatic cavalry officer as well as a flamboyant dresser and was known as the Dandy King. Early life Joachim Murat was born on 25 March 1767 in La Bastide Fortunier, in the Lot Department of France, in the former province of Guyenne to Pierre Mouris Geordie, an affluent farmer and an innkeeper, and his wife Jean Lubier is, daughter of Pierre Lubier is and of his wife Jean Vielescazes. Pierre Mouris Geordie was the son of Guillaume Mouris and his wife Marguerite Hubail, paternal grandson of Pierre Mouris, born in 1634 and wife Catherine Bedoyes, who died in 1697, and maternal grandson of Bertrand Herbail and wife Anne Rox. Joachim Murat's parents intended he pursue a career in the church, and he was taught by the parish priest, after which he won a place at the College of St. Michel at Cahors when he was ten years old. He then entered seminary of the Lazarists at Toulouse, but when a regiment of cavalry passed through the city in 1787, he ran away from seminary and enlisted on 23 February 1787 in the Chasseurs des Ardennes, which the following year became known as the Chasseurs de Champagne, also known as the Twelfth Chasseurs. In 1789, an affair forced him to resign and he returned to his family, becoming a clerk to a haberdasher at saint Saray. French Revolutionary Wars By 1790, he had joined the National Guard, and when the fate of the nation was organized on 14 July 1790, the canton of Montecon sent Murat as its representative. Then, he became reinstated into his old regiment. Part of the 12th Chasseurs had been sent to Montmedy to protect the royal family on its flight to Varennes, meaning regiment had to defend its honor and loyalty to the Republic. Murat and the regiment's adjutant made a speech to the assembly at Toul to that effect. In 1792, he joined the Constitutional Guard, but left it that same year. His departure was attributed to various causes, including his constant quarreling and dueling, although he claimed he left to avoid punishment for being absent without leave. An ardent Republican, Murat wrote to his brother in 1791 stating he was preoccupied with revolutionary affairs and would sooner die than cease to be a patriot. Upon his departure from the Constitutional Guard, he reported to the Committee of Surveillance of the Constitutional Assembly that the Guard was guilty of treason and that his lieutenant colonel, a man named D. Scorse, had encouraged him to serve in the émigré army of Louis Joseph Prince of Condé, then stationed in Koblenz. This garnered for him the support of the Republicans, for he rejoined his former regiment and was promoted to corporal in April of that year, and to sergeant in May. By the 19th of November 1792, he was 25 years old and elated at his latest promotion. As a Sioux lieutenant, he thought, his family must recognize that he had no great tendency for the priesthood, and he was hoping to prove that he had not been wrong in wishing to be a soldier. One of the ministers had accused him of being an aristocrat, confusing him with the noble family of Murat Oven, an accusation that continued to haunt him for the next several years. 13 Vendamier in the autumn of 1795, three years after King Louis XVI of France was deposed, royalist and counter-revolutionaries organized an armed uprising. On 3 October, General Napoleon Bonaparte, who was stationed in Paris, was named commander of the French National Convention's defending forces. This constitutional convention, after a long period of emergency rule, was striving to establish a more stable and permanent government in the uncertain period after the reign of terror. Bonaparte tasked Murat with the gathering of artillery from a suburb outside the control of the government's forces. 
Murat managed to take the cannons of the Camp Jez Sablons and transport them to the center of Paris while avoiding the rioters. The use of these cannons, the famous whiff of grape shot, on 5 October allowed Bonaparte to save the members of the National Convention. For this success, Joachim Murat was made chef de brigade and thereafter remained one of Napoleon's best officers. Italian and Egyptian campaigns in 1796, with the situation in the capital and government apparently stabilized and the war going poorly. Napoleon lobbied to join the armies attempting to secure the revolution against the invading monarchist forces. Murat then went with Bonaparte to northern Italy, initially as his aide-de-camp, and was later named commander of the cavalry during the many campaigns against the Austrians and their allies. These forces were waging war on France and seeking to restore a monarchy in revolutionary France. His valor and his daring cavalry charges later earned him the rank of general in these important campaigns. The battles of which became famous as Bonaparte constantly used speed of maneuver to fend off and eventually defeat individually superior opposing armies closing in on the French forces from several directions. Thus, Murat's skills in no small part helped establish Bonaparte's legendary fame and enhance his popularity with the French people. Murat commanded the cavalry of the French-Egyptian expedition of 1798, again under Bonaparte. The expedition's strategic goal was to threaten Britain's rich holdings in India. However, the overall effort ended prematurely because of lack of logistical support with the defeat of the French fleet due to British sea power. After the sea battle, Napoleon led his troops on land toward Europe. The remaining non-military expedition staff officers, including Murat and Bonaparte returned to France, eluding various British fleets in five frigates. A short while later, Murat played an important, even pivotal, role in Bonaparte's coup within a coup of 18 Brumaire. When Napoleon first assumed national power, along with two others, Napoleon Bonaparte set aside the five-man directory government, establishing the three-man French consulate government. Murat married Caroline Bonaparte in a civil ceremony on 20 January 1800 at Mortefontaine and religiously on 4 January 1802 in Paris, thus becoming a son-in-law of Letizia Romolino as well as brother-in-law to Joseph Bonaparte, Napoleon I of France, Lucien Bonaparte, Eliza Bonaparte, Louis Bonaparte, Pauline Bonaparte and Jérôme Bonaparte. Napoleonic Wars Napoleon made Murat a Marshal of France on 18 May 1804, and also granted him the title of First Horseman of Europe. He was created Prince of the Empire in 1805, appointed Grand Duke of Berg and Cleves on 15 March 1806 and held this title until 1 August 1808, when he was named King of Naples and Sicily. He was in charge of the French army in Madrid when the popular the 2nd of May uprising that started the Peninsular War happened. Murat was equally useful in Russian campaign of 1812 and during the German campaign of 1813 in the Battle of Leipzig. However, after France's defeat at Leipzig, Murat reached an agreement with the Austrian Empire in order to save his own throne. During the Hundred Days, he realized that the European powers, meeting as the Congress of Vienna, had the intention to remove him and return the kingdoms of Naples and Sicily to their pre-Napoleonic rulers. Murat deserted his new allies before the War of the Seventh Coalition and, after issuing a proclamation to the Italian patriots in Rimini, moved north to fight against the Austrians in the Neapolitan War to strengthen his rule in Italy by military means. He was defeated by Frederick Bianchi, a general of Francis I of Austria, in the Battle of Tolentino. Death Murat fled to Corsica after Napoleon's fall. Joined by around a thousand followers, he hoped to regain control of Naples by fomenting an insurrection in Calabria. Arriving at the Calabrian port of Pizzo, Murat attempted to rally support in the town square, but things went very wrong. The crowd was hostile and he was attacked by an old woman blaming him for the loss of her son. 
Calabria had been badly hit by Murat's repression of local piracy and brigandage during his reign. Forces of the king, Ferdinand IV of Naples, arrested him, and he was put on trial for treason. He was eventually sentenced to death by firing squad at the Castello di Pizzo, Calabria. When the fatal moment arrived, Murat walked with a firm step to the place of execution, as calm, as unmoved, as if he had been going to an ordinary review. He would not accept a chair, nor suffer his eyes to be bound. I have braved death too often to fear it. He stood upright, proudly and undauntedly, with his countenance towards the soldiers, and when all was ready, he kissed a cameo on which the head of his wife was engraved, and gave the word, thus, soldats, fights votre devoir, droit ho kermes epargnes le visage, few, soldiers, do your duty. Straight to the heart but spare the face. Fire, Murat is honoured in a cenotaph in Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris, but of course he is not actually buried there. Even though someone says his body was lost or destroyed after his execution or others that he was buried in a church in Pizzo, making the removal of his body possible later on. His body was actually buried not far from his execution place, in a common grave placed beneath the floor of St. George's Church in Pizzo Calabro. There, in the centre of the nave a gravestone still honours him saying here is buried King Waki Murat. Gallery. Murat in French uniform. Murat in Hussar uniform and a black page. Murat in Polish uniform, Murat as a Marshal of the Empire, Joachim Murat entering Florence, the 19th of January 1801, Murat as King of Naples, Coat of Arms, Coat of Arms as Grand Duke of Berg, Coat of Arms as King of Naples, Titles and Styles, the 25th of March 1767 to 1 February 1805, Joachim Murat, the 1st of February 1805 to 15 March 1806. His Imperial Highness Joachim Napoleon, French Prince. The 15th of March 1806 to 12 July 1806. Duke of Berg. The 12th of July 1806 to 1 August 1808. Grand Duke of Berg. The 1st of August 1808 to 19 May 1815. His Majesty by the grace of God and the Constitution of the State, King of Naples. Children. Murat and Caroline had four children. Achille Charles Louis Napoleon Murat, hereditary Prince of Berg, Prince of Naples, second Prince Murat. Tallahassee, Florida, the 12th of July 1826. Catherine Dangerfield Willis, daughter of Colonel Bird C. Willis and wife Mary Lewis, and great grandniece George Washington, without issue. Princess Marie Letizia Josephine Annonciade Murat, Venice, the 27th of October 1823. Guido Taggio Pepperly, Marquise Pepperly, Conte di Castiglione, and had issue. Lucy and Charles Joseph Napoleon Murat, 2nd Sovereign Prince of Pontecorvo, 3rd Prince Murat, Bordentown, New Jersey, the 18th of August 1831 Caroline Georgina Fraser, daughter of Thomas Fraser and wife Anne Loutone, and had issue, he was an associate of his first cousin Napoleon III of France, ancestor of René Aubert Honnois. Princess Louise Julie Caroline Murat, Trieste, the 25th of October 1825, Giulio Conte Ras Bonner and had issue, relatives, he had a brother named Pierre Murat, who married at La Bastide Fortuniere on the 26th of February 1783, Louise de Storg, daughter of Imeric de Storg, born in 1721, and wife Maria Layou, paternal granddaughter of Antoine de Storg, born 18 November 1676, and wife Marie de Mary and maternal granddaughter of Jean Layou and wife Louise de Vallon. His other brother named André Murat was created first Count Murat in 1810.
Pierre and Louise were the parents of Marie-Louise, Pierre Adrien, Marie Radegonde, Thomas Joachim and Marie Antoinette Murat, whom Emperor Napoleon I arranged to marry Charles Prince of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen, Karl III and Marie were the parents of Charles Antony. Prince of Hohenzollern from whom descended Stephanie of Hohenzollern, Sigmaring and Queen of Portugal, her brother Caroli of Romania and Caroli nephew, Albert I of Belgium. Another descendant of note is his great-great-great-grandson, the American actor René Aubert-Honnois. In popular culture, in the 1941 Errol Flynn movie They Died With Their Boots On, a fictional account of the life of George Armstrong Custer, Murat is credited with being Custer's role model. Murat is included as a minor character in Tolstoy's War and Peace, introduced in the prelude to the Battle of Borodino. William R. Forst Chen's novel The Forgotten War establishes that Murat has a descendant, Commodore Lucian Murat who lived in the 22nd and 23rd centuries of the Star Trek universe. Commodore Murat was the commanding officer of the starship Us Verdin.